Hi, this is John Pacini, and this is Heart Rhythm TV. Uh, we're here for today's second episode of Hands On, and I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Miguel Valderbano from the Houston Methodist DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center. He is here with us today to discuss a very exciting and important technique, vein of martial alcohol installation for the treatment of atrial fibrillation. Dr. Valderbano, welcome to Heart Rhythm TV Hands-On. It's so great to have you here. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. So um, everyone's talking about this technique. Everyone's so critically interested in it. Um, and I just want to start with a very simple question. Why should we be doing uh, vena martial alcohol installation? What is the evidence behind it? So the... The reason mechanistically is because it harbors innervation and triggers of atrial fibrillation, and it is located right on top of the left atrial ridge where the mitral isthmus is. Uh, but beyond those mechanistic reasons, there are outcome data available. We conducted over, you know, it was an effort of, of almost 12 years, but we conducted a large clinical trial, the Venus trial, randomizing patients with persistent atrial fibrillation to conventional uh, catheter ablation alone or combined with alcohol infusion in the vein of Marshall. And we found that after one year, the primary endpoint, endpoint of atrial fibrillation recurrence um, was uh, decreased uh, significantly in the patients that had vein of Marshall alcohol, with also decreases in AFib burden and re rate of repeat procedures. We also found that uh, the outcomes were better when uh, perimitral block was achieved. So that's as far as the outcomes goes and why uh, it makes sense to have this technique as part of your tools. Great. So we have a randomized clinical trial that shows improvement not only in maintenance of sinus rhythm off antiarrhythmic drugs, but also a reduction in AFib burden among patients with persistent atrial fibrillation. That, that's, that's very impressive. Um, so obviously the next question is, how do we do this in the EP lab? So... Uh, let me just show a video that, that outlines an entire procedure and how it's done. The first thing is obviously to have a stable uh, CS axis. I like to use the IJ axis to land in the CS with a sheath. This is one um, sheath that we use for left ventricular lead delivery. And in that sheath, I have a lima, left internal mammary artery catheter, uh, that has a nice curve pointing upward to engage the vein of Marshall. In the LAO, you will not see vein of Marshall, but if you go RAO, you will see in most cases a very nice vein of Marshall like this one, proximal to the valve of your sons. And what you do once you have an engagement of the Lima in the vein of Marshall is advance a preloaded uh, balloon with a wire so that uh, the wire goes into the vein of Marshall and then you can advance the balloon as distal as possible in the vein of Marshall. Then you retract the wire and you inject, advance the balloon as distal as possible and that's where you're going to inject some contrast and then follow that with a first injection of alcohol. I typically inject one cc at a time over, over one and a half minutes or so. You want it slow so that it scleroses the veins. You will see the contrast being injected here, and that's where the alcohol will go. It's normal to have myocardial staining. Then you retract the balloon about one, two centimeters, reinflate, and then inject alcohol. Here, contrast again. Um, and deliver another cc of, alto, of alcohol, retract again after deflating, give a third injection. Depending on the length of the vena marshal, you may do two injections, three injections, or four injections. You want to kind of have them spaced evenly. And the last injection is at the vein of vena marshal ostium. This kind of staining is normal, and it reflects uh, the location where alcohol is going to go. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, Usually it takes about 20 minutes or so when you, when you have everything streamlined, but uh, that's kind of a, a 30 second uh, outline of how it's done. What's that's important- uh, Miguel, okay. sorry to interrupt, but um, why is it important to go to the distal uh, margin of the vein? I understand there's some variety in the technique. Can you walk our audience through the rationale for starting distally and moving back proximally? So my take is that you want the alcohol to reach the tissues. You don't want to simply sclerose the vein. Um, and uh, remember that you're delivering alcohol in a, in a retrograde fashion. The venous flow is coming at you. It's coming at the balloon and it's bringing the alcohol back to you. So physiologically, you have to overcome that venous flow to reach the tissues. 
And the rationale is when you have a large vein uh, and it takes one cc to fill the vein, you may not get, get all the way to the tissues. Uh, I know that's a matter of opinion. I know the Bordeaux group uses uh, alcohol in one or two stages with bigger doses at each time. That's a matter of opinion. I don't think it, 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 it is probably crucial, but I like to see the tissue staining and so that I know where the alcohol has gone. Great. All right, so let me show you, John, uh, a few examples that operators are going to find to kind of troubleshoot how, um, how this is done and, and troubleshoot what they're going to find when they start going. First, you need to have um, a clear uh, setup of, of the equipment you need, right? So you need a sheath uh, to engage this coronary sinus in a stable fashion. If you go through the neck, I use any of the left ventricular uh, lead delivery sheets available in the market. If you go from the from the groin, from the femoral vein, I like to use a deflectable shift to engage the coronary sinus in a stable way. Once you're in the CS, you need to cannulate the, the vein of Marshall selectively or subselectively. And for that, I think the best is the left internal mammary artery uh, catheter subselectors. You have to use at least six French uh, in order to be able to advance uh, the balloon and the wire through it. Then it's important to use any wire works. If you want to get fancy and collect signals from the vein of Marshall, you want to use a, a wire that conducts electricity and configure that as a unipolar electrode. But most of the time, I don't. Uh, any wire works. And, but you need to use a balloon that is over the wire. Obviously, you need a, a balloon with a lumen to inject the alcohol. And then a two valve to torque the lima, independent of the alcohol, and of course, the end deflator. Um, important uh, things about access. If you're using IJ access, you want to use your normal workspace. You, you normally stand at the, at the right side of the patient close to the groin. So in order to do that, what I do is I get IJ access with a short sheath, and then I engage the coronary sinus with the coronary sinus sheath, and then bend it slightly like that so that I can still work um, in my usual space. Then I have the sheath in the coronary sinus and the Lima uh, catheter in there. And then we inject a contrast and then look for a candidate vein of Marshall that we could try to that we could try to engage. Let me see if that place here. If you go from the groin, then it's a little bit different. The, the Lima catheter will engage the coronary sinus, the Lima sheet, the, sorry, the Agilis sheath will engage the coronary sinus, and then the Lima has to be rotated, pointing upwards to uh, engage the vein of Marshall. And that's when, when you will get a nice stable. Um, uh, engagement. So different different styles to doing it. And if you go from the groin, obviously you save yourself the, the the pain of IJ access. But with ultrasound guidance, I don't think that's an issue. Most operators would be fine. And then finally, I wanted to go over John a few a few uh, anatomical variants that can become an issue when you get when you start with this procedure. So sometimes you don't quite see the vein of Marshall particularly in LAO, it may overlap with the, with the CS. So it's important to select the right, um, the right fluoroscopic projection. Usually a shallow RAO works best. And here you see how the lima is, is torqued posteriorly in the CS and posteriorly and superiorly to engage the vein of Marshall. And this is a perfectly good vein of Marshall that was not apparent in the first shot. And sometimes uh, you don't see it. You don't see the vein of Marshall at all. And it is because you're injecting perhaps too distal. So if you notice here, I, you don't see any vein of Marshall, but you see kind of a filling defect here that suggests that that's where the valve of your sons is. So what you need to do is go just proximal to the valve, and sure enough, you will find a vein of Marshall. Now, this is a particularly large vein of Marshall, but it's, it's, it's impressive that despite being a particularly large vein of Marshall, it was not apparent at all in the first venogram. So anatomical variations are probably the biggest challenge that new operators will face. And knowledge and familiarity with other veins is important. We compiled a, a large atlas of, of different atrial veins, more than 150 patients um, five years ago. And we found that there are, you know, besides the vein of Marshall, sometimes there are septal veins, an inferior vein. The more distally the vein of Marshall is the most consistent atrial vein. Then there's usually an appendage vein that may take off independently from the uh, CS or sometimes as a branch of the vein of Marshall like this one. Sometimes there are uh, roof collaterals uh, that actually drain in the right superior pulmonary vein and even extracardiac collaterals. And depending on where you inject alcohol, you will find a low voltage card that matches that anatomy. 
In this case here, we, we did not find a vein of Marshall, we found an inferior vein and we gave alcohol and achieved a low voltage car from the mitral annulus towards the right inferior pulmonary vein or the posterior wall. If you have branches of, that come off the vein of Marshall, you will take more uh, low voltage territory. Uh, in this case, there's an inferior vein that will give us uh, a large inferior posterior uh, lesion. The vein of Marshall alcohol typically gives you a lesion from the mitral annulus to the left inferior pulmonary vein, as shown here. Uh, and if there's more branches, it will be wider. Um, sometimes if there are no branches, you will get a very small area of low voltage. If you give alcohol in the appendage vein, by itself, it will not isolate the appendage, but you will get a lesion in the base of the appendage higher than the vein of Marshall lesion. And even if you give alcohol in an anterior vein, more, far more distal, you will get a low voltage area in, an area in a location similar to the anterior mitral line that some people do. So that's what I have for you, John. Well, uh, this has been incredible. Um, and these are you know, amazing images and figures. Um, some questions, Miguel. So uh, obviously we're not done when we do the vein of Marshall alcohol installation. We still have some work to do on the endocardium. Is that right? Correct. Uh, I, I really uh, make, would like to make this point that um, vein of Marshall alcohol uh, is primarily an epicardial ablation in the area of the mitral isthmus. And um, it will not create enough low voltage or enough ablation in the CS uh, the CS is, is untouched. So if you have epicardial connections that still provide conduction al along the mitral isthmus from the CS, you may need to do them. Alcohol will not terminate that. So what I do think it's important is to recognize that um, the reliability with which you get pain mitral block when you give alcohol is much greater than, than with endocardial RF, even with CS ablation. We showed that in the Venus trial. So in short, yes, when you give alcohol, you want to make sure that you end up procedure with pain mitral block and add more or less ablation as needed. That's great guidance. You, you've given us a lot of really important practical tips, you know, making sure we're imaging in the RAO view, uh, making sure we're proximal enough and we're below the valve of ascends to make sure we're accurately in the vicinity of the takeoff of the vein of Marshall. You made a lot of great points about the advantages and advantages and disadvantages of a, of approach from above and below and the differences in getting coaxial to the vein of Marshall. One very simple question that we haven't touched on yet is, what is your workflow? Um, do you do this first and then do you go transeptal and do PVI if the patient hasn't had PVI yet and then move to the isthmus? How, do, how does this procedure work in your lab? I get IJ access. First, as I get femoral access, then I, I go across the septum, do a, ma a map of the left atrium. I like to have the geometry made of the left atrium, perhaps even with the voltage. So we have a baseline voltage. Uh, then um, I would give the alcohol first and then do the pulmonary veins and then uh, complete the mitral isthmus, complete, co complete the pain mitral block. Uh, Depending on the stage of my fellow's training, um, sometimes I let the fellow start with the pulmonary veins where I get access in the vein of Marshall. And by the time I'm done with the alcohol, the fellow might have done already the pulmonary veins on one side, and then I just continue, we continue the rest. Um, if, if, if done like that, uh, then it really does not, does not interfere much with the workflow. And we, you know, I don't schedule five of these, but I would schedule three or two depending on the complexity. A lot of patients come with uh, previous ablation failures and it gets tricky, particularly if the CS has been ablated or if the CS is particularly stenosed from previous ablations. So it's not always, it's not always straightforward, but for a first, uh, first um, time ablation in persistence, which is what we're using it for, um, the workflow really is, is relatively smooth. Well, I mean, it certainly sounds like uh, there's an efficient approach uh, that each lab can can undertake with this procedure. This has been an incredible session. And, and Miguel, I, I, in closing, what are the three most important things you'd like to emphasize to clinicians who are getting started with vein of uh, martial alcohol ablation? So first, I think, uh, understand the anatomy. Understand the anatomy and the fluoroscopic projections. I would say second, um, 
get familiar with the equipment. A lot of a lot of operators, um, when they start, they they recruit the help of an interventional cardiologist. Um, I am I I train at an age where, as a general fellow, there were no interventional fellows, so we got familiar with balloons and all that stuff. But I see that newer generations are are more intimidated by by. Uh, all the gadgetry associated with angioplasty, uh, balloons, and stuff, and um, and you know, be be uh, patient. Be patient. If you don't see the vein of Marshall in the first shot, check other projections. Some of them can be really tough. I think it's relatively easy in in seventy percent. In fifteen percent, you have to work a little bit. Uh, we are getting about 90% success, but I, I would admit that 5% of those are really tough. Like you could have, especially if there's been an ablation in the CS and others, but be patient. Well, I mean, incredible advice for vein of martial alcohol ablation, but maybe for all of EP, know your anatomy, be familiar with and know your equipment, and finally be patient. Uh, you know, those are about as good a words of wisdom as we're going to get. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Valderabano, congratulations on all of the incredible work that your group has done. I, I realize the Venus trial was really the end of a very long line of investigation and a lot of incredible work uh, and dedication by you and your team. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your words of wisdom and experience with us. Um, again, this has been a great session and thanks to all of you for joining us. This is Heart Rhythm TV. Thank you.